Hello, welcome back to the Off Grid family. Today I'm doing sort of a part two, part three maybe, of how to run a universal washing machine motor from a 12 volt battery. These motors are stupidly useful. Um, I've used them in so many different little projects, big projects, etc. I'm, I'm hoping to make a wind turbine at some point, but I keep getting delayed with various other things. I've had a lot of people request um, a little bit more of an in-depth video on how to identify which wires are what. Because the ones I often have, all of the wires are exposed and you can see where they go and you can sort of make an educated guess on what they do. Um, whereas some of these are sealed units and you can't see any of the wires. And um, so a lot of people say, you know, how do I know which one is the um, coils, which ones are the brushes, etc, etc. So I've put together this video just to show you guys how to identify these different things. And hopefully this will give you a much more in-depth um, view on how to do it, whether you've got a completely sealed unit, etc. Um, all you're going to need is a multimeter, so I hope you enjoy it. Before I continue, I'd just like to say thank you very much to my Patreons. I have three Patreons now. I have Paul, Simon, and David, and you guys are awesome. I really appreciate everything you've done, and um, you're keeping the channel alive, and I do genuinely really appreciate it. Anyway, if you'd like to be a Patreon, uh, all the links are in the description. There are lots of uh, bonuses and bits and bobs for you guys if you do decide to. Anyway, let's get on. Okay, you're gonna need obviously the motor you're trying to get running. You're gonna need a 12 volt battery and you're gonna need a multimeter that can read ohms. And that's literally it. Um, I'm gonna use some things like some crop clips and various other things um, just to make connecting wires easier for me. But let's go through how we're gonna figure out which bits what on these motors and how to actually run them. Okay, in my first video, I explained that you just need to know where a few wires are or what a few wires are and then you can get one of these running quite simply. And the wires you need to know are the two brush wires and then the actual coil wires inside. Um, and on these, both these, it's fairly straightforward. You can follow the wires quite easily. However, there are quite a lot of these that are completely sealed units. And then all you've got is a few plugs coming outside and you can't tell what anything is. So um, I started get looking into how we'd find which wires are what and I came up with quite a simple thing what you need to do is you need to a little bit brute force it but I'll talk you through it and it should only take you about 10 minutes to find all the wires that you need okay the first thing you're going to want to do is pop your multimeter on ohms and then just at random or if you've got any sort of inkling find two wires any two you want now I obviously know these two wires are the brushes so I'm going to choose them specifically um, and I'll show you what you're looking out for. doesn't matter about the number in particular, but what you want to see is if you turn the motor, it will have a reaction. If you click on any other random ones, turning the motor will have no actual um, effect on the actual ohms. So once you know you've got it once you you've actually got something that will change when you're turning. Okay, so that's how we found which ones are the actual uh, brushes. Next, then we need to find the coils. Now, again, what we're going to do is we're just going to randomly choose two wires, not the ones that are brushes. We now know what these are so we can discount them from our, the rest of our investigations. And what we do is we just connect our wires to two random things. Okay, nothing. Okay, so we try a different one. Now, obviously these are helpful and they're color coded. So we know that we've got two whites here and two greens, uh, a green and a brown, but let's just connect it to this one. Okay, so that's now connected up. I want to show you that when you turn the actual motor, it will still affect it even if it's coils, but you'll see how much less it affects it. But if we put it back on the actual brushes quickly. There is a huge effect. And that is how you know it's the brushes. So you will get some movement no matter what you've got it on but just bear in mind it's a much much bigger one when it is the brushes right 
So now we've connected this to what we think is the coils or a set of coils and it's 3.5. What we do is we'll move over to this set of coils. And that is much, much lower, right? And what we're trying to look for is the highest number. And I'm trying to make this as simple as I possibly can. So we now know this here is the set of coils we want. So we've now identified the coils and the actual brushes. So all we need to do now is, so now what we need to do is we need to set, um, connect up one of the wires from the coils we've just found to one of the brushes. And then we've got the other brush and the other coil, and that is now our positive and negative. Let me wire that up quickly. Okay, so I'm just gonna plonk, and plonk this one on the negative. And I'm actually just gonna wire up a crop clip to this. And put this on the positive. And it's as simple as that. Right, let's do the same again on the other motor, just to show you that it works on both. And um, then hopefully you'll be able to go away and do this yourself with pretty easy outcomes. Now, um, I've been very lucky with the ones I've got. I've only had one completely sealed unit, but um, I've had a lot of requests to do a video to make this process a little bit more straightforward. So I thought, do you know what? It's the right time, get on with it. So. First off, we want to find the coils. So again, I'm just going to look for random, um, random wires. But as I said in my previous video, normally they are next to each other. So if you find, let's say, this is a coil, then the one next to it will probably be its corresponding partner. Not always, but most of the time. So let's start off. Okay, so we set our thing back onto ohms and now I'm going to work from the bottom to the top and I'm looking for the brushes first like I always do. So that's the bottom one and then hopefully the next one up will be its corresponding partner. But if this isn't the brushes, then it might be the first coil and that's what we're looking for. So, okay, and that is definitely one of the brushes and you can see by how much it shoots up that it definitely is. Okay, so that's that's a handy, that's the first set sorted. And so again, I'm just gonna go to the next next lot up. And we're going to connect it up and we'll see what the ohms are. Okay, that's 3.1, let's see what the next um, set up are if at all. There's nothing. So what's that on? Um, Three point one. and 3.9. So these two are the ones I'm gonna use as the coils then, and this bottom two is actually the uh, brushes. So all we need to do, like in the last one, is choose one brush and twist it together with one of the coils we found. And that leaves us with the other brush and the other side of the coil as the positive and negative. And again, we will just wire them up now. And it's that simple. Um, once you know what the brushes are and once you know which ones are the coils, 
you're away. Now it doesn't really matter uh, if you chose another coil, let me show you. So with the coils, you're not so concerned, but obviously you need definitely need the brushes. But I would just do a bit of experimentation to find out which ones work the best. Okay, there you go. It's hopefully as straightforward as I can make it. You just need a multimeter and a bit of time um, and a little bit of luck because, you know, it can take a few minutes to find which ones correspond to what. But um, I'm hoping that that will be enough to help you all uh, get your washing machine motors or any universal motor up and running and working from 12 volts. Anyway, thanks again to my patrons. You guys are awesome. Thank you very much to you for watching. I'll see you again next week. Bye for now.